I'm Rachel and this is Nick and behind us is a retired ambulance that we spent all summer converting into our very own off-grid tiny home. This retired ambulance is a 2011 Chevy 3500 cargo van front end. Uh, it is a 6 liter V8 gas engine. Um, so essentially the front end is the exact same as any Chevy cargo van, like a 3500 cargo van. Um, that's a gas engine, six liter. And then they're converted by a private company in British Columbia um, to turn them into ambulances. So it does not come from the factory as is. And obviously we tore apart the ambulance portion of it and turned that part into our home. I should also mention that it is a rear wheel drive. Um, we picked it up from a guy living in Vancouver who buys these from auction. Um, so we picked up for $6,000 from him. I think that's everything that I have to say for now. So maybe let's go into the cab and take a look in there. So being a 2011, you would think that uh, the kilometers would be relatively low, but because it's an ambulance and they're driven very hard and daily, um, they're quite high, especially for being a 2011. So we bought it at 337,000 kilometers, but they're very well maintained. Um, every 5,000 kilometers, they have all their fluids replaced. Um, everything's constantly checked. So I wouldn't say that having high kilometers really matters that much, especially being a Chevy engine and that they're so well maintained. Um, I think this thing could take us, you know, another 500,000 kilometers probably if we wanted it to pretty easily. The only thing that I would be worried about is possibly the transmission going. Um, if you've ever seen ambulances <laughs> driving around, they're pretty hard on the transmission. Um, a lot of stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. I know that the brakes were replaced, so I know they're in good shape, but I would be a little worried about the transmission. Um, it seems to drive fine for now, so if that does become a problem, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Here we have our electric box, um, which has everything that brings power into the ambulance. Um, it's a bit of a rat's nest, not so much here. Um, this is, everything kind of in this area is what came with the ambulance. It's, um, it's super well labeled, which made it a lot easier for us to kind of understand what goes where. Um, a lot of the stuff was snipped out, so it took a lot of time to kind of like follow wires, figure out what was hot what was just completely off, where power was being drawn to and from. So anyways, it, it was a very intimidating task for us to go through this. Um, everything down on this section uh, is what we installed. So we have our solar controller here, um, which obviously our, our solar panels are up on the roof here. Um, all the power is fed down into this. And then from there, it goes into our batteries and keeps those fed. Um, here we have our inverter. It's a relatively small inverter, it's 600 watts. Um, because the electrical box was already set up for us uh, and the battery compartment was already set up for us and we were kind of iffy on what we were doing with the electrical, we opted to just go for the same batteries that originally came with the ambulance, which were two deep cycle AGM batteries. The batteries are run in series and together they give us 232 amp hours at 12 volts power. Something we love about having an ambulance versus a sprinter is that the electrical box is on the outside and it's got the door access so we don't have to worry about finding a spot for our batteries and rewiring all of our electrical. We kind of just know where everything goes. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably one of the biggest perks to an ambulance over a sprinter. Uh, anyways, I'll lock this door up and we can head to the back. So before we go up top and show you the solar, we figured that we would just come to the back of the ambulance and show you our back, our garage area, because um, in our build, we have no bells or whistles. It's just um, our storage underneath our bed, which you'll see later that we have a fixed bed. Um, basically, all that's under there is our winter stuff. We are Canadian, so we have jackets and sweaters and that kind of stuff in there. We have extra water and then like our keepsakes. So the two of us have been living overseas for the past few years. We don't have a lot of stuff. We got rid of our stuff a long time ago. 
and unlike some other camper van builds where people are moving from a large house this is everything we own so that's all under the bed right there but again nothing crazy or fancy so we figured we'd just get it over with anyways let's show the solar so i know this isn't really the most conventional way to get up to the roof of your van but we opted to not have a ladder because we didn't want to give the public access to the roof um, to be able to see our solar panels or to be able to see our roof vent um, and that's actually the same reason that we kind of left the van looking the way that we did um, we wanted it to just look like a work van we didn't want it to look uh, we didn't want to give it a paint job and we didn't want it to look you know super shiny or fresh or anything like that because we don't want anybody to have the idea that anybody's living in it. We just washed the van, so I don't really want to wear shoes up here, but like when it's winter time and cold in Canada, as it gets here and snowy, um, I, I won't really have a problem with wearing shoes up there. Just right now, I, uh, I don't really want to get it dirty because I washed it for this tour. So that's about it for the exterior of the van. Now we're gonna go inside and show you what we did with it. Neither of us had any experience doing any sort of build like this at all. Um, Nick doesn't come from a carpentry background. I knew nothing really about anything. So it was definitely a learning experience, but we're pretty happy with the inside. So we're very excited to show you. So this is the entrance to the ambulance. Um, I'm sitting on a step right here that just steps down. And then to my right, we have some books and then I have my journal, which I use every single morning. So that was very important to find a spot for that. And then to my left, we have a shoe rack, which we built last minute. I don't know why we hadn't thought of that at first, um, but it's definitely gonna be important when the winter months come to have somewhere to put our wet boots and um, hang our winter jacket. So we put little hooks up here and then I have our laundry basket, which hangs right here as well. So if I continue walking into the ambulance, you will see that I actually have plenty of headroom. I can even go on my toes and not touch the ceiling, but I'm only 5'3 and Nick is six feet. so. He can't say the same thing, um, which is obviously a huge downfall of having an ambulance versus, you know, a high top van or a sprinter. This was actually the biggest van that we could find at the time when we were looking for a van to buy. So um, there are other perks of having an ambulance that we will talk about a little bit later. We've already mentioned the electrical and there are some other things too as well. But um, yeah, for me, the height is really great. So behind me here is a cubby. You'll see that like down here, we don't have a partition or anything to the cab. We just have curtains. And up here is four boxes, which all have a purpose. This one is my socks and undies. I won't show them for too long. <laughs> In here we have all of our hats. We and like toques. to wear hats and toques. Well, I mean, in America, hats and toques are the same thing. We have- No, um, toques, they don't say, they say beanies. We have Nick's socks and undies in here. Show them all. And then this is like one of those really annoying kitchen drawers that we have that basically has everything in it. These are all baby wipes because we love baby wipes, but you'll see that we also have um, scissors and, you know, a barbecue lighter and a whole bunch of boring stuff. This was a hack that I found online how to fold up um, plastic bags. So that's fun. That's what we use for garbage. So those go in there. And then obviously beside it here, you're going to see that we have our French press, which we use every single morning. This right here is our air conditioner. And then right here is our kitchen cupboard, although it broke like yesterday and I tried to fix it today and it didn't work. So this is what it looks like now. Um, and in here we just have some just general plates forks, knives are in here, cups, pretty standard, nothing glamorous. Down here we have um, things that we use all the time for dry storage. So we have oatmeal, rice, this is protein powder, coffee, nutritional yeast, and panko breadcrumbs. We have this little hangy thing here, which just has coffee in it now, but when we have fresh fruit, we put that in there as well. So 
So I'm just gonna crouch down here to show you our hanging storage here, which is by far the hardest thing to describe our, in our entire ambulance build, and one of my favorite parts about our ambulance build. So this was a very last minute idea, and we just call it our temporary storage for a number of reasons. Number one being that it's obviously temporary, like you find these, it's just a closet organizer, so we can just take it down or put it up whenever we want. If we don't want it to be up, no big deal. And two, it's temporary because everything that we put inside of it should be temporary. So nothing has a permanent spot in this closet organizer. So for example, we just did our laundry today and we put our clean towels in here before we put them away. Um, we have our oven mitts in here right now, a couple extra face masks, but this looks different every single day. The idea is that when we're off grid, uh, we can use it more. So if we do a big grocery shop and get like a bunch of chips or something, then we can put them in there um but we do have a rule in our ambulance that we don't put anything on the floor we don't put our clothes on the floor at all um which has actually been going pretty well so far thank you to this thing because say you're too lazy to put your clothes away at night you can just put them in here for the evening and then do it in the morning or whenever you feel like it so this is a godsend we didn't think of it until the very end of our build and we're so happy that we put it in <laughs> So right beside our kitchen here is our toilet, which is everyone's favorite place to go to the bathroom. We have a Dometic porta potty. It's just a very simple setup here. Um, we have it strapped in, so it's not going anywhere. It's mostly for emergencies. We haven't had to use it yet, but I'm sure we will have to in the future. And for us, it was super important to have some sort of option in here. We don't have all the space in the world, but we managed to find a little bit of space, a little corner for that. So it works, it works for now. <laughs> so I guess I will take you guys on a tour through the kitchen. Um, this is my favorite spot in the whole van. Uh, I get to stand here and make coffee in the morning. And you know, it's great because I can just like, <laughs> I can just stand here and, and look at the, at the clouds or, or the stars. Um, and this is the only place in the van that I can almost stand up completely straight. So this is my favorite spot. But I'll show you guys the kitchen. Um, so, uh, this panel here came with the ambulance. These three buttons here control the lights. We have one bar uh, on the driver's side, the second bar is on the passenger side, and then this one is actually really handy because it controls the light that is just above the kitchen here. So, uh, maybe I'll show you. Let me shut these off, and we can just turn the one light on, which is great. So if one of us is still in bed and the other one wants to make breakfast or coffee, um, we can just hit uh, the one light here. So yeah, it's back on. Over here we have a temperature display so we can see what the temperature is inside of the ambulance. Right now it's obviously 26 degrees. Outside it's a little cooler. <laughs> like I'm a weatherman, <laughs> meteorologist. Um, <clears throat> Here we have volume control just for in the back. So we do have a speaker in the roof um, that we can control through this knob. Uh, it just plays the radio from the cab. 12 volt plug in here, which is super handy. And over here we have our um, solar panel controller, uh, not a controller, our solar panel display. So it just lets us know what percentage our batteries are at, how much power is going from our solar panels into the batteries, etc. Um, so super handy. Just before we get to the actual kitchen counter and all that, um, I'll just show you guys back here. So I wanted to leave a space to be able to access the electrical if I needed to. So I did leave a little panel here. So that will allow me to get to all of the electrical because that's where I ran most of it to. So that's pretty handy to have that there. Um, yeah, and this just pops in and out. So the reason that this bumps out here is because this is the actual electrical box. Uh, we've seen with other ambulance builds, people tear it right out. You know, we do lose like almost a foot of space um, coming in. And then I think this is, I don't know how many feet across, but still, I stand by what I said. I do like the fact that we have our electrical box on the outside. So up here, we just have a small little bar sink that we installed uh, and then just a copper faucet, which 
I actually want to give a massive shout out to Matt and Danielle uh, of Exploring Alternatives YouTube channel. Um, I pretty much completely ripped off their um, plumbing system. Uh, so thank you guys so much for that. We didn't want to go with an electric plumbing system. So we went with completely um, manual, manual, I guess. Uh, yeah, so we have the copper faucet here, which I soldered. Um, and then down here, uh, we have a little foot pump. So all that you do is you press on the foot pump here and it will take water from this line. I don't have it hooked up at the moment but this hose just falls into this little can and it will suck the water down into the foot pump, push it up through my PEX lines and then out the faucet and it comes down into a, um, into a five gallon bucket that I've installed in the back. Uh, super simple system. The only thing is it's kind of a pain to um, empty when we have to because I have to pull the lid up the ABS piping, pull the gray water out without spilling it, and then take it outside and empty it in the gray water tank, which to me isn't a massive price to pay. We have to empty it every few days, but it's not that big of a price to pay because um, <clears throat> because I didn't want to have to go underneath the van and spend a lot of time installing a water tank, inst installing a gray water tank, and then um, you know a water pump and all that kind of stuff. So I'm happy with the system that we have for now. That may change, who knows? But uh, thank you to Matt and Danielle of Exploring Alternatives for the super great idea of this plumbing system. Anyways, thank you guys so much for that system um, from me as well because as soon as we saw your YouTube video, we were super stoked on that system. I liked it actually the most from the beginning. We actually originally got a faucet that didn't really work with the system it just kept spraying water everywhere and i really liked the look of the copper faucet so nick just soldered one for ourselves and yes thank you so much we love that system and we're really happy that you brought it to us so anyways back to the kitchen we have our induction cooktop here which draws a lot of power way too much power way more power than we thought it was going to draw so this was actually a really big mistake that we didn't really think about before incorporating it into our, our van build um and when we realized that it draws as much power as it does uh it was a little bit too late so this was all already built based on this one cooktop and that was a huge bummer to find out but luckily we can still use it when we're plugged into shoreline power um so that's all set up for it to be able to work as soon as we ever plug in so that is still there <laughs> but in addition to the, that cooktop we also have many other ways to cook thank god so we have another portable gas stove which works on propane and then in addition to this stove we also have a coleman propane folding grill go fold and go grill so that's at the back of our ambulance for when we're camping or we want to cook outside this is for the interior of the ambulance when we want to cook inside but we are off grid and then this is in the interior of the ambulance if we want to cook inside and we are plugged into shoreline power so it's a lot of options that came out of making one simple mistake but in the end it actually kind of works because when we're on grid we just kind of cook a lot of food in advance put it in the fridge and then just heat things up um, when we're off grid. So that's basically how that works. Okay, so that kind of just tucks behind here. It's not the most ideal situation, but again, we didn't plan for it and hey, that's what we got. So here we have our 12 volt compressor fridge. It is a chest style fridge. So let's just open it up. I actually love that it has a light, like a real fridge in it. <laughs> so we basically just keep our fruits, veggies, sauces, that kind of stuff. We really like making our own sauces. Sometimes we'll have like leftover rice or whatever, make it once a week and use it for the rest of the week. Um, but other than that, we don't have a lot of stuff in there right now. So sometimes it gets really full and sometimes it just looks like that. So that's what we're working with right now. Again, that's, pulled, uh, that's plugged into 12 volt power right now. Right beside us here is a mirror, which you will see. It comes off the wall and goes back onto the wall, which again, isn't rocket science, but it's actually something that I really like because this is the spot where I do my makeup. But if the lighting isn't very good, then I can take the mirror off and move to somewhere else in the ambulance so that I can get the natural light coming in depending on the time of the day. And then right below it is a little nook. If we take these pillows off 
and we take this outlet out, we can get to our pantry. It's really nothing exciting. So these are just Tupperwares of dry food, spices, spatulas, that kind of stuff. So after I put the pillows back on here, you can see that we have these lights um, and these are clip lights. So they don't actually always live in that spot. They can live wherever they want in the ambulance really. We move them around all of the time and then we can just basically adjust them. If we don't want to use power, it's nighttime, we don't want to wake the other person up. And then right beside this little nook as well is more power. So this is actually plugged into our inverter. So if we uh, turn our inverter on, all of these outlets work and we can plug in here. And then this is my favorite spot to sit in the ambulance because it's like my little nook. And in the mornings, I do my makeup. Turn off. I do my makeup back here. Um, and when we're hanging out, I hang out here all the time. I just think it's perfect. I love that there's a little countertop here. And I don't know, I just find it to be a really comfy Rachel size seat. Inside of this bench is our closet. This is literally, well, not all of our clothes at all. Most of our clothes are down. All of our summer clothes. Most of our summer clothes. So yeah, most of our summer clothes. So these are my shirts here. Um, and then my pants. And then we have Nick's shirts and pants. And then we have our, our sweaters. And I steal Nick's sweaters a lot. So that means his sweaters are my sweaters, whether he likes them or not. <laughs> How do you feel about that, honey? It's fine, I'm used to it. <laughs> This grid is very important to us. It's very sentimental for us with the pictures that are on it. And if you've watched our videos before in the past, you would know that this grid was in the background of a lot of our videos. But I was actually not gonna use it for aesthetics this time. I was gonna put hooks on it and hang stuff off of it. But then I realized I have no idea what to hang. So this is purely aesthetic once again. One of the important things that we wanted to incorporate in this build was that we could both sit up on the bed. Um, so, as you can tell, I can sit up perfectly. Uh, so we built it two feet from the ground, which gave us tons of storage space underneath, and it gave me just enough room to stretch out, and I can stretch my back out and sit up straight. Another thing that we really love about having an ambulance in particular is that it's so wide that we can fit a regular sized bed in it. This is a double bed. Um, it could technically fit a queen. Like honestly, if we want to fit a king, probably could. But yeah, we just have our double bed here and we actually have room at the end. So there's actually a fair bit of room at the end here. And then of course we have cabinets at the foot of the bed that you can see right here. So in here we have belly baskets filled with things that I mean, we pretty much need. We have our chargers in one, deodorant, we have a vanity one, and then we have little um, makeup bags like this that organize a lot of our stuff. So this isn't a new system for us because when we were living overseas, um, living in Cambodia, Australia, wherever we were living, traveling through, we've been keeping our stuff in these travel, these little makeup bags for a while now. So as soon as I see the zebra one, I already know what's inside and same goes for the other ones as well. So this is actually not um, much of a new system for us. This is actually a way more organized system than what we've been kind of used to. And then I think that this is again, one of those circumstances where, you know, we didn't come from having a house. We came from um, living out of our backpacks. So a lot of the stuff in the ambulance has been an actual upgrade for us. So there are a few things that we haven't mentioned yet. One of them is actually at the foot of our bed right now. Um, it, you may have noticed earlier that we actually don't have tables for our living room area. Back here, actually, we have two side tables, which I can just pull out this way. It is awkward. We're not going to pretend that it's not awkward to kind of pull these guys out. And then we can just set it up in here. You can also set this up standing up, but I'm just sitting on the bed right now, so why not? So that's one of the tables. We do have two, but we have realized that it actually works 
just one because obviously the person that's sitting in this side can just put their dinner plate or wine glass or whatever there and then the person sitting over on this side which is obviously always going to be me because i love this spot um i can sit here have my laptop here have my wine glass here or whatever and then eat dinner here or however it works but yeah technically these actually do fit horizontal as well so if we do want to have both tables out we can but as you can see it would be a little bit tight if i had this one and that one as well i think that's about it for our van tour i think so there were a few things that we did miss we do have heat which was one thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, we have a heater underneath Rachel's bench uh, that runs off of shoreline power. And just underneath our bed, we have a heater that runs off of the coolant from the engine. So that goes in like where the carpet is. So it goes out into the van. Yeah. Because when you say under the bed. Under the bed, like it yeah. goes <laughs> into the van. It doesn't just blow hot air into our garage. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's one thing that we forgot to mention. The next thing that we forgot to mention um, was our curtains for the back here. So. It's been three months of me shopping and I am yet to find curtains that I really like for the back. So we haven't bought any yet. Right now we have um, insulation. What, what do you call that? Like reflective insulation? Oh, uh, reflectix. So we have reflectix that'll go around, that I've cut for all of the, the windows. windows. So, that's... so we'll have, we'll be able to black out all the windows. No one will be able to see in and it'll keep us cool or warm depending on the weather. So that's, that's our temporary solution for now. We actually probably will keep those um, on our windows even when we do get curtains, but that is why the back doors are exposed of the ambulance. And if you were wondering like, hey, I feel like anyone can see into this build, that's why. And of course we don't have them on the windows right now because that would be very ugly for this tour. <laughs> so yes, I think that that's it for now. I mean, I feel like we missed so many things and we're gonna look back and be like, oh, I wish I said that and wish I said that. But that's what more future videos are for. This was such a crazy summer project. Thank you to anyone who followed along with us the whole time. We posted the whole van build and all of our vlogs on this YouTube channel as we always do. We love sharing our journey with you guys. We love being able to look back on the footage. It's really awesome for us to be able to do that, which was the whole point of this YouTube channel in the first place. So yeah, thank you so much for following along. We are so grateful and we hope that you like our van. We know it's not perfect, but hey, it's ours and we, I think that you did an amazing job. I think that you did an amazing job. And we hope that you think we did an amazing <laughs> job too. It's just a simple budget build, um, but it's our home and we're really proud of it and really happy with it. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Hey.